I'm probably going to regret making this video. Well, here goes nothing. Todd Phillips' Joker was screened for critics at the Venice Film Festival, where it received outstanding praise from critics, even winning top prize at the event. Then it was screened at the Toronto Film Festival, where a lot of critics trashed it for being too violent. And yeah, that's pretty much the only criticism I've seen for this film so far. It's not a good social commentary. If you strip Joker off everything that makes it good, then it's a terrible movie. Whatever that one means. Point is, it's a mess. Today I want to explain why I think being against this movie for political reasons is absolutely absurd and why loving the Joker as a character or loving this movie is not a problem at all. One small thing. Yeah. When you bring me out, can you introduce me as Joker? Scarface, Taxi Driver, Goodfellas, The Godfather, Hannibal, Fight Club and many more have existed way before this movie came along. Having a terrible human being front and center in a story. People love Don Corleone, he is a criminal. Do you blame him for every gangsters existing in America? Same for Scarface, Tony Montana is a legend to so many people because of how honorable his death was. And there are so many songs about him you would think he's a national hero. Tony Montana, they call me Tony Montana. I mean, if they want a nigga, they gonna have to send a sweat team. And I'm going out like Scarface in this last scene of legend. What that mean? Scarface, Scarface. Tony Montana, Tony Montana, Tony Montana, Tony Montana. Director Todd Phillips has even admitted to have been inspired by the 70s and 80s crime thrillers and Scorsese films in particular. Look, I haven't even seen the movie yet, but from what I know and I've spoken to those who have seen it and it seems clear to me that the goal is not to prove that the Joker was right, but rather give a point of view, a villain's perspective. And it's not even like that's the first time DC has done it with this character. Batman the killing joke literally ends with the Joker telling Batman a joke and them laughing together at it. That did not exclude the fact that a few pages earlier he shot Barbara Gordon and probably raped her as well. The comic showing a soft side to the Joker by giving him a backstory did not mean for us to feel sorry for him because at the end to us he was still a murdering psychopath who paralyzed Barbara Gordon. But the comic gave us a perspective, a perspective we do not have to sympathize with. It's meant to give the Joker more depth. And even the fact that he's got so many origin stories and doesn't know which one is the real one makes it even better. It adds to his insanity. As a character, we are not meant to love the Joker because we agree or understand him. We are meant to love him, well, because he's fucking insane. It would be a problem if this turned into a franchise, but a once-off character study focused on the Joker is no different than what DC has done with him in the comics. And if it worked there, it should work here, which brings me to the next point. Why are you doing this? <laughs> to prove a point. Hollywood has been trying to bring DC to the Marvel side for quite some time now, and to some degree, it's not a bad thing. Just like Marvel, DC is a comic book brand about superheroes. If you make Superman snap someone's neck now, next thing Wonder Woman will do it, then next thing everything goes to shit and kids who idolize these heroes will start thinking it's okay for their heroes to kill, which could lead them to think killing ain't that bad. Look, our favorite characters do it all the time. Honestly, I get that. However, this movie seems to be 100% aware of that problem. That's why the movie is not PG-13. It's rated R for violence, sexual content and strong language. It's not for kids. You cannot tell me it's okay for other movies to have complicated or straight up bad guys as the main character because they are original stories and the Joker is not okay because he's a comic book character. It makes no sense to me. And if a grown ass dude watched this movie today and decide he wants to become a criminal, then he had a problem way before that. If the Joker didn't exist, he would have found another film to be influenced by. It could have been Goodfellas, maybe The Town, Nightcrawler, Hannibal maybe, 
Kids need protection against hyperviolent media. Grown men know who they are. It is not a film's role to shape their personality. And if someone tells you they love the Joker because they could relate to him, then walk, walk away slowly and probably call the cops and tell them to check his basement. I love the Joker and how he's been evolving throughout the years. I mean Joker was given a sidekick in the 90s, a sidekick who has become popular herself. He's been given more depth, not only by his different origins but even by his actions. A movie like The Dark Knight amplified the perception that the Joker is smart in his madness and knows exactly what he's doing, while stories like Batman Under the Red Hood reminds us that at the end of the day he's truly a psychopath we love to hate. It's not about money, it's about sending a message. Remember the hashtag Killmonger did nothing wrong? Remember the Thanos was right one? Because I do. And honestly, that should have been a bigger problem than this Joker movie. It wasn't talked about because they are supposed to be villains that will eventually get defeated by the heroes. But it is worth acknowledging a movie like Black Panther arguably excused the behavior of its villain. To a point that even our main hero changes because of the villain's actions. Our protagonist himself think Killmonger was right. So of course the audience will agree as well. Killmonger did nothing wrong. Killmonger did nothing wrong, okay? Killmonger did nothing wrong. Killmonger did nothing wrong. And that's totally fine. Like I said before, a villain's point of view is not something to be afraid of. And if you like the character, it means the role was well written and that the actor did a fine job. Whether you agree with the villain or not, that's another issue. However, you can love a character how well written they are but still not relate to them. I can't relate to Killmonger, I am not a fucking killer. I can't relate to Tony Montana, Thanos, Zod or the Corleone family. And I definitely can't relate to the fucking Joker. But I love all the characters I just mentioned and that's okay. Some people don't even realize how hypocrite they are when they take a stand against this movie. Here are a million reasons why the Joker movie is problematic. Oh my god, the Punisher TV series is so cool! Oh, so you're telling me the Punisher, the guy who literally massacre criminals because he thinks it's okay because they are bad is cool, but the Joker is problematic and we shouldn't watch any movie focused on him. Even though unlike the Punisher, the movie does not make excuses for how much of a terrible person he is, do you even realize how hypocritical that is? Now, don't get me wrong, it's not a Marvel vs DC thing. I think it's fine to love the characters, whether it's Joker, The Punisher, Killmonger, Zod, Thanos, Loki and so on. I'm actually kind of excited to watch the Loki TV series. Just do not use the argument that the Joker shouldn't be supported because it sends the wrong message because that does not make any sense. All I have are negative thoughts. Look, I might end up not even liking this movie, who knows, but that's not the point of this video. The fight against this movie started the moment it started getting attention. No one cared before because it was supposed to be yet another dumb decision for Warner Brothers for their DC brand. But after the first trailer, people seemed genuinely interested and that's when a group of people started mentioning issues that do not exist. Declaring this movie dangerous. Is just as dumb as saying that video games are the reason psychopaths love shooting at people. Stop trying to filter entertainment just because the world is a fucked up place. What I want to hear from viewers after this movie comes out is their opinion on the performances in the movie, the cinematography, the direction, how the story works narratively, the pacing, the score and how it all comes together and if it works as a whole or not. I don't want to hear how this movie will affect America in the future or how it is not the social commentary one would expect or how the Joker is a psychopath because really who goes to see a Joker movie and expect the clown press of crime to be anything else? Give this movie a fair shot and judge it for what it is and not anything else. If it works as a movie then that's all that matters and it's okay to love both the movie and the Joker as a character. Thank you for watching.
Thank you.